Sup friends, welcome back to Pester Quest. Today, I believe we are on Jake? I think, yes, we are on Jake. That's right, adventure. Oh no. <laughs> what is this? Oh my god. All you wanted to do was make a new friend, and now you're running like hell from a giant white creature with two heads, each sporting a single garish eye. Kind of like a Cyclops, except with two of the one-eyed faces, so you guess it's a duo Cyclops? Whatever it is, it's angry as hell and chasing you through a tangled jungle. You leap over a stand of ferns and duck under one of those big woody vines jungles. What? Always have. Okay. After befriending Jane, you asked her for the names of some of her friends. Oh my. Not too many details, you made that mistake with Solux. Just a little tantalizing friendship amused Boucher <laughs> to get you started. Specifically, you were interested in the friend that needed her help daily. Now that sounded like some fertile ground for a relationship. You kind of regret bringing it up though because Jane got very flustered telling you about Jake. It's clear that her friendship with this guy is a topic of some emotional turmoil. Well, who better to help sort it out than you, everyone's friend? But instead of friendship, you've been greeted by a number of ferocious white monsters. Your garbled brain offers up that you probably pissed off this kid's Lucis. Except, this is Earth. Between different planets, different universes, and the mess of timelines in your memory, you're having a hard time figuring out you trip over a big tree root and land smack on your face in the dirt. You choke on decaying plant mat matter clawing out your throat and roll over onto your back just in time to see the duo cyclops oh <laughs> about to bring down one huge foot right on your vulnerable body. Are you allowed to start over if you haven't even made a branching choice yet? You cover your eyes. Jake, save us. <laughs> Nothing happens. Oh man. After a moment of Olympic level breath catching, you venture a peek. The duo Cyclops is in pieces on the ground. Two pieces. You hope the thematic resonance offered it some comfort during such a brutal end. You scramble to your feet. Your future new friend Jake must have intervened to save you. You look around for him, but there's another swoosh noise and a glint of metal, and something inhuman appears in front of the duo Cyclops' body. Oh! <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> it's a robot! Kind of a cartoony one with shiny metal joints and big red anime sunglasses. That's red to you, man. It looks orange, bro. It even has a perfectly gelled metal hairstyle. Honestly, it looks pretty goofy, but it's also holding a katana and staring right at you. You think you saw something similar broken all over the floor of Equius's room. It must be a battle robot, and you don't have the strength of your punchiest friend. Why would we challenge him, bro? That's crazy. We are not doing that. Do not. You default to your old standby cowering. You shrink back, hands raised, and the universal symbol for whoa now. Dang, no horse pun intended. For some reason, the thought of Equius and the presence of this robot are making your brain go right to the horses. Suddenly, a shot rings out behind you. It sounds so stupid that you almost don't believe it, but it's true. Who is shooting a gun at a robot? The robot makes a little vrrr startup noise and raises its katana into a ready stance. A blur of green and khaki charges out of the jungle and tackles the robot full in the stomach. It doesn't fall to the ground. Instead, it puts the kid a human. What? You can see now. So probably this Jake guy into a headlock. He struggles, lashing at it with his elbows and kicking it at its ankles. The robot proceeds to beat the kid up. There's no reason to describe it in detail. It's unpleasant to watch. It makes you feel really bad. You didn't even know there could be a polar opposite of Equius. But this kid is it. The robot is super effective against him. You have to stop it, but there's too much action for you to get close. Even if you could reach Jake, there's no way you could zap him out of here without bringing the battle bot with you. Except, things have been weird lately. The accepted rules of your power no longer seem so inviolable. Maybe you can just do it? You close your eyes and think really hard about bringing Jake with you. Oh, I guess... 
one. Oh my, oh my God, this. <laughs> I've never seen a room like this before, man. Like, there's so much to take in. I can't even process. First of all, Avatar. Oh my, that's the first thing I saw. And then, is this like Mystique from um, X-Men or something? And then I think that's the Hulk from not X-Men. <laughs> then Tomb Raider. And then a Star Wars character. Like, this is crazy, bro. This is actually crazy. Whatever, okay. When you open your eyes, a young man stands in his bedroom. Wait, is it Jake's birthday? No. What? You shake your head and consternation okay anyway you manage to bring jake and only jake into the house he stands there clutching his side and panting recovering from the robo beatdown the guy's bedroom is so covered in movie posters it's hard to even see the shape of the walls the floor is littered with weaponry a lot of kids you've met live like this basically lounging around in piles of destrious pertaining to their character defining interests Anyway, it's clear to anyone who sees this room that he absolutely loves movies and guns. You don't need to waste any time on exposition there. Oh god, here comes my Australian accent attempt. <laughs> Jesus Kreezum! You all right over there, my chromatically challenged chappy? You're fine. Jake is the one who seems hurt. That robot really did a number on him. I'll say, confounded thing practically never doesn't do a number on me. It does so many numbers, it's one short of a standing ovation down on a Broadway Avenue. I'm just glad I could be there to help. You know, life is always just a smidgen easier with a bro's helping hand firmly placed on your behind. What? <laughs> with a friend behind you is what I meant to say, huh? Oh, sure. Jake doesn't really seem phased by any of this. Not the alien monsters on his island, not your presence, and not his ungainly defeat at the hands of the anime robot. Not even by you teleporting him around. Well, sure, my good buddy Jane told me you might drop by. And honestly, I've been chomping at the pro whatever that thing is all. <laughs> Bit to meet you, oh, fellow me live. I'm sure Jenny showed you a good time as she is a stand-up host and a top-notch friendo. An absolute wonder wench, no doubt about it. But gosh, I've just been so gung-ho to show a brand new personage around the old digs. Get it? I live in a ruined temple so it's literally digs. Nudges you with a meaningful elbow and gives you a hearty raising of the brows. What the heck? Did you just say that out loud? He did. Well, here you are, ready to be shown around the ruined temple, where to first? Oh, haha, ha, let's not actually go there. You know, I'm no stranger to danger, but there's nothing like a man's familiar four walls to give him a feeling of peace and quietude. We well, better hide out for a while, just a tactical withdrawal while this my robo buddy and the usual monster, menagerie, are out of the way and about. Right, the monsters. You can't help but notice that this is the same island where Jade lived. But instead of one big white creature custodian like Beck, Jake has lots. Trying to be culturally sensitive, you tell him it must have been nice to have such a big family. Jake looks perplexed. I reckon it must be nice. I can't say I've ever had one though. If family is what you're looking for, you couldn't have picked the worst place to mount your search. There's about as much familiar spirit in my locale as cows in a cornfield, which is to say they're simply none to be seen. Oh, you misinterpreted things. So Jake really just lives here alone? That must be hard. I'll say. As another one of my friends could tell you, there's nothing worse than being a teen stranded alone in the middle of the specific... <laughs> what am I on, bro? Pacific Ocean. My grandma used to live here with me, but she died long ago. You think of your friend John, or rather his corpse standing ceremonially in Jane's living room. Same house, similar kids, same island, mysteriously dead grandma. It's not hard to put two and two together and come up with your dead friend Jake. Oh my God. It's a gut punch, even though the inexorable passage of time means that, of course, you could zap to the future and visit time periods where all your friends were dead if you wanted. Okay. 
<laughs> you guess that's kind of what you did to your old friends by skipping forward so many years on Alternia. Haha, <laughs> wow, you're kind of starting to hyperventilate about this. You focus hard on Jake trying to pull yourself together. Luckily, he doesn't seem to have noticed anything is wrong with you. Jake seems like the kind of person who doesn't have room in his head to talk and notice other people at the same time. Bruh moments. But I try not to complain. After all, things could be worse. I have all the cans a boy could ever want to cook a lies. I'll get the romp and the pumpkin patch to my heart's delight. Plus, this island is the perfect setting for one of the coolest things in the world. That's right, adventure! The thrill of discovery, the frenzy of battle, it's the most fulfilling diversion of them all. Why, no boy of a sudden disposition could feel sad about his perpetual isolation and the deadness attribute of his family members when the whole dark and teeming jungle is available for his dauntless exploration. Is that really what he thinks? You can't help but remember about 30 seconds ago when Jake said he didn't want to go out to the ruins. You're no problem, Sleuth, but Jake's room looks pretty lived in, not to mention the quantity of movie consumption suggested by his decor. Yep. <laughs> You're about to respond when there's a horrendous clatter from down below. Oh, what the heck. Jake freezes, a small animal caught in the headlights. You suspect the headlights are of the red anime glasses variety. Oh, God, Zooks! <laughs> The Metal Maverick makes his return. Listen, you look like a rum customer with Primo getaway sticks. Fleeing is probably our best option here. You don't get it. The last guy you knew who made a habit of consorting with battle bots always bested them handily. Why would Jake make something he couldn't beat? Well, that's because he didn't make it, homie. Whoa! Jump in, Jeho Safat. I'm touched by your high opinion of my robotics know how. No, I didn't make the robot. My best buddy did. He's a genuine whiz with tech of all kinds, and a real thoughtful guy, even though sometimes I wish he would apply some of that big brain box to helping me out just a touch more. He couldn't be here himself because of the physical limitations of time and space, so he sent the robot to train me. It's really nice if you think about it. I mean, at first I thought it was somewhat overbearing and unnecessary, but after Dirk explained it to me, I got that it was his way of being nice. Uh, hmm, this best friend sounds amazing! <laughs> Come on, we love Dirk Strider. Not everyone is as lucky as me to have three stalwart compadres to brighten their day when they live alone on a murder island. When you think about it, I'm just about the luckiest gent who ever was stranded in the Pacific with a puzzle of ferocious monsters and a killer robot. You guess someone could say that? If that someone was Jake. Another harsh sound from below reminds you of the urgency of the situation. You could easily teleport the two of you out of here, but, well, the creepy biotech chittering noise of drones still echoes in your memories. You've had some bad experiences trying to escape a killer robot with its eyes set on a friend. Escape via teleportation seems like a temporary solution at best. Sooner or later, Jake's probably going to have to face the robot. Is there some way the two of you acting together can take it down? Oh, you don't understand. It learns from your actions. Any time I've even started to get the jump on that dad burn chrome sucker, <laughs> it's just turned around and given itself a throw, a thorough school feeding on the topic of kicking my sweet bippy. <laughs> if we fight it together, it'll just learn how to fight two people, and then when you leave me all by my lonesome, I'll be freaking screwed, basically. It's like that robot is in The Incredibles. The Incre you could have said like the Terminator or something then. Oh my god. <laughs> Except instead of being an absolutely fantastic work of cinematic art, it's my real life. Jesus Creasum. <laughs> Jake's friend is among the worst gift givers you've ever seen. There's just one thing we can do if a hasty retreat is in what tickles your biscuit. If we could find a way to turn on novice mode, it'll be easier to deal with. I usually don't do it, but I'd hate to subject the guests to the violent vicissitudes of a robotic rascal. I just can't remember how it's done. Oh, okay. So at least this friend included an easy mode. 
You were starting to think this guy was one of those gamers who thought easy mode was cheap in the experience. But if he designed the thing with the novice mode, maybe he can remind Jake how to trigger it? Hmm, well, I have to admit, you've really put your acrimonic digit right on the crux of the matter there, amigo. Yeah, just go text him or something, bro. Strahd is a bang-up bro, and I want other word against him, but he doesn't really let, like the offer help. I imagine he'll think it's my fault for forgetting in the first place, and he probably won't want to give me the answer because then I won't learn the lesson that I shouldn't be so forgetful. Oh, wow, okay. You're starting to form some tentative option opinions about this Strider guy. Bro, what about him? He's like the best character in this whole thing, bro. That said, buddy -o, I think you stumbled onto quite the slick solution to our woes. There's no shame in a brave adventurer asking for help when he's well and truly screwed. Maybe we can find someone willing to offer us their casa as <laughs> a temporary abode. You wanna go to someone's house? Oh, sure, you could do that. Maybe Jake could message Jane. Although, now that you think about it, given how Jane talked about Jake when you were there, it seems cruel to spring something like this on her with so little lead time to prepare herself. You don't want to fluster her too badly. You quickly backpedal. Maybe we can go to John's house. No, <laughs> Telling Jake that Jane seemed too busy when you were there last. Is there anyone else? John. Hmm, well, Roxy's probably zazzled by now. Zazzled? You know, pie-eyed. On a two. Time went on. Deep in the giggle water. <laughs> what? Three sheets to the code. No restart. Oh, wait, she's drunk. Bingo was his name Oh, So, this is a common thing. And she's Jake's age? You don't want to make any assumptions, but that sounds, well, concerning. And also... Familiar? You remember what feels like a long time ago now, helping a girl symbolically trash her mother's liquor collection. Of course, alcoholism isn't that rare, but still, you're starting to feel like there's something strange about all these convergent circumstances. Yes, they're all related to each other, basically. That's all you need to know. Anyway, is Jake sure his friend is okay? Oh no, something like that. Roxy's just a fun and wacky gal, haha. -ha. Sure, she dabbles in the devil's drink, but she always seems to be having such a good time. I wouldn't want to make any unfair assumptions about it. Somehow this fails to make you feel better. I guess asking Strider for help is our only option. Oh, I just know he is going to be a complete pain in the keister about it. I'll have to butter him up like a morning muffin. Are you any good at manners of persuasion? Yikes. You want to understand where this kid is coming from, but you're reaching your limits here. Is that really all the friendships Jake has? If so, this is bleak. There's clearly some kind of feelings based train wreck on the horizon for him and Jane. His friend Roxy is obviously having a crisis that Jake pretends not to see, and his friendship with Strider has more red flags than the People's Republic of China. <laughs> Bro, no, Dirk is just trying to look out for him, okay? Is this what Jake is willing to put up with just for companionship? He just pretends he doesn't see the huge issues in his friendships to keep the peace? Is this what it looks like when someone is so indiscriminately hungry for affection that they're willing to go along with anything to get it? You've had about enough. You tell Jake you can't stand this anymore. This life that he has, it's no good. Not even close. He lost his family and he's scared to leave his house. His only company in real life is a robot that's programmed to hurt him and he thinks it was a gift. <laughs> he seems unwilling to face the glaring flaws in his closest relationships. And all of this might be hard and sad, but it can't be helping Jake to be so deep in denial about it. He can't just cover this all up with cavalier optimism. There is no way that's the best way for him to live. You understand it must be scary when there seem to be structural flaws in every one of Jake's support pillars, but addressing them is the only way anything can get better, because this hiding out in his room all alone and just pretending he has the support he needs is not sustainable. You don't say this part, but if he keeps going along with what other people want him to be, you're scared for what's going to happen to him as he grows up. That can't lead anywhere good. After you rant, Jake stares at you aghast. You start to feel bad. 
Yes, you probably needed to hear those things, but you could have guided him more gently. You're usually an expert at encouraging people slowly toward emotional growth, but this kid really got under your skin. But then Jake's face crumples. You're absolutely right. Oh, I am lying to myself. I manicure the image of myself as some brave adventurer, but I don't go out to the ruins unless I have to. And I suppose on some level I have suspected that things with Jane and Roxy and Dirk weren't exactly Jake. What? Wait, what? Oh, it's like a word that means good. It's just plain English. Jake English? <laughs> anyway, that did still didn't make any sense. <laughs> I guess I didn't realize how serious it was or how much I was really ignoring. Gee willikers, it's not easy to hear that all this came across loud and clear to a complete stranger. That really makes me feel low. But I guess for a truly brave gentleman, the only thing to do is try to do better from here on out. It's scary, but I do want to be that kind of person who is honest and forthright. A real hero. If I'm not doing that, then I need to figure out how to do that. Holy smokes, you really opened my eyes, Mix Mysterie. Mis <laughs> Mix MX Mystery Friend. You really got an act for spotting problems. Do you think you could stick around and help me do better? Uh, nah, man, I got places to be. <laughs> it's like asking the sun if it minds shining. Oh my god. Helping people confront their buried issues and come out of the change for the better. Why, that's the very thing you've desperately latched onto to give your life some kind of purpose. But something about this feels off. Was your rant really all it took to turn things around for Jake? Did you really just fix him? It doesn't seem right. Definitely not good pacing anyway. Jake is looking at you with big green puppy eyes. You have to make a choice. Well, why would we not help him? That's kind of mean. Uh, of course you're going to help, Jake asked, didn't he? You think through your old bag of friendship tricks, encouraging him to talk to people about his feelings? It'd probably be good, but it's a little complex. He has three different relationships with these kids, all with their own set of problems. And you're not convinced that Jake is really up for confrontation yet. Your best bet is probably... Forging unlikely connections through your powers of teleportation and friend matchmaking. You think proudly of the time you introduced Dariah to Tizias, someone who struggled with the questions Dariah was facing but found a more constructive solution. That's what you need. Not someone similar to Jake, but a good foil. Someone who will be able to call Jake on his avoidance. You need the ultimate pull no puncher, an expert in tough love. No! <laughs> no, we don't need Briska. Oh my god. You asked Jake if you might take the initiative to introduce him to another one of your friends. Someone who has the kind of take no boldness approach that he needs to cultivate. Someone who can really help. Absolutely. freaking lootly Lead on, buckaroo. You clap your hand matedly on his shoulder and zap on over to Briska. Oh my goodness, no, we're back on Alternia, no! <laughs> you expect her to be in her high, but when your field of vision clears, you're at a beach again. You've appeared a diplomatic distance away, not right up in her face. Briska is walking down the beach, hands in her pockets, occasionally aiming a disaffected kick at a piece of trash. You call out to her and wave her over. Her face splits into a grin at the sight of you. It gives you a warm glow, like you've befriended someone's mean cat who never gets along with visitors. Maybe more like someone's mean mountain lion. Hey there! Hi, Briska! What is she doing on this beach? I came here looking for my stupid fish friends. Terezi and I need an explosive device for a thing, and as much as I hate to admit it, Ampera isn't bad at making them. <coughs> But he's not even here. I can't even find him the one time I ever want to see him ever. Figures my so-called friends leading me to do all the work again. It's this kind of self-starter energy that Jake could really learn from. I don't I don't really agree with this mailman. 
<laughs> Jake run. <laughs> Speaking of, you start to introduce your friends to each other. So when you turn to Jake, he's frozen, his face caught in an expression of shock and wonder. Oh, probably because she's an alien. Maybe you should have mentioned your friend was an alien. You keep forgetting to mention things like that. Oh my god. Oh, okay, he seems fine now. As you look at him, Jake rallies, snapping to such a ramrod posture you half expect him to salute. He opens his mouth to speak, then shuts it. You can talk to her, you prompt. It's okay. Yes, righto. Holy smokes, I'm ruffled as a baby's bonnet to meet you, Miss Briska. I'm poised and trembling on the lip of your pit of knowledge, just ready to fall into the expected abyss. I'm happy to learn whatever you can teach me. Although, I must say, when my pal here intimated, they had a friend who could help. I didn't expect you to be of such a blue and spottery persuasion. Of course. Why would anyone be anything else when they could be blue and spidery? Ha ha. You have a solid point there, my extraterrestrial associate. I hope you'll pardon my candor, but a real gentleman doesn't hide from the truth. You may be the coolest girl I've ever seen in my entire life. Clear his throat nervously, hoping he didn't overstep. <laughs> My goodness. Well, I can't say I'm surprised to hear it. Feel free to keep listing things that are awesome about me. Despite his professed aberration for Briska, however, Jake isn't listening. Hang on, wait. Technically, the only other girl I've seen was my grandma. <laughs> but you know what I mean. It's kind of disrespectful to refer to one's own grandmother as a girl, so I didn't mean her. Oh <laughs> gosh, I seem to be rambling. Well, I hope this is already an exemplar of the kind of being true to myself. I hope to cultivate as a regular habit from here on out. I think it can be very brave to just keep being yourself even when things feel awkward, don't you think so? <laughs> oh wow. There are so many things wrong with that, I don't even know where to start. Oh, doggone it, really? This is why I need your help, Miss Vriska. I didn't see anything wrong with any of that at all. Here I am going around thinking what I'm saying to everyone is tickety-boo, and it turns out all have been a load of catty wampus fiddle faddle. What the? <laughs> oh man, this is the nicest present anyone's ever gotten me. See, she's addressing you now, ignoring Jake's question. A predatory shark smile spans her pointy face. You must have known things were getting bad with Tavros, in a different way than usual, I mean. He just kind of stopped responding in the same way he did before, and not even because of his fakey fraud confidence. He just says no good can come of talking to me. So you brought me a new nerdy loser. This rules. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Well, that wasn't exactly what you expected. Although, now that you think about it, why didn't you expect this? Pretty much anyone could have seen this coming. Well, I didn't tell you to go to Briska Mailman. I told you to. Whatever. Hey! Except Jake, of course. I may have little quirks and quibbles, but that doesn't mean I'm a loser. If you weren't a lady, I dare say such slanderous language would earn you a one-way ticket to Fittikiff's Fisticuffs Island. Which, now that I think about it, is more or less appropriate moniker for my permanent residence. How did you like them, Granny Smith Apples? This is hilarious. I've never met anyone who makes me feel so good about myself. I'm so lucky to be cool. Excuse me, but I haven't heard hide nor hair of any apology yet, Miss Rude Alien Girl. At least Jake is standing up for himself. But you get the feeling that this enthusiastic bravado wouldn't hold up if the issue was an interpersonal one with his friends. Either way, Vriska is not backing down. She sizes Jacob, stepping forward to intimidate him. Do you really want to fight? Because I get the feeling you're whatever your planet's equivalent of. Cold? Cold? I don't know. I may not know what that means, but I've never once backed down from a scrum. <laughs> a scrum. And I'm not about to start now, chum. Whoa, whoa, now. You are not going to let two of your best friends, a category that includes all of your friends, throw down right in front of you. 
Especially not after Briska compared Jake to Tavros. Doesn't she remember the consequences of fighting Tavros? Doesn't she want things to go differently here? Wait, what's that supposed to mean? Oh no, you didn't mean any offense. You know Briska has been through a lot and her past mistakes should be viewed with that context. But you know Briska didn't mean to hurt Tavros as much as she did. Right? Bro, mailman, are you on gas? Briska is no longer having fun. She's turned to you now, her mouth set into a line, fist clenching at her side. You remember how magical it seemed to have earned her friendship and how easily Briska can lash out when she thinks her friends have turned on her. You think you know what went down between me and Tavros? Tavros was almost as pathetic as this guy. I was trying to help him get stronger. But every time I did, he just folded like a loser. He barely even tried to fight back. He was too scared and wimpy. And everyone always gets mad at me for pushing him. But that's what our planet is going to do to him. If he doesn't get stronger, he'll die. Trying to protect them from danger now is just letting that happen later. I would even say I'm the only one who's ever really cared about him. At least I tried to help him shape up. You almost forget Jake is here, even though he's like, ah! But at this, he makes an indignant noise, and you turn to see that his anger and distress has ratcheted up several notches. Well, pardon me, Spider Smithette, but it doesn't sound like you were much of a friend at all. Oh, God. <laughs> you nudge Jake, trying to let him know that Brissa can be a little scary and it might not be best to push her on this, but Jake isn't listening. No matter how much you think you're doing this fellow a favor, from what you said, he was really scared and sad. And I'm sorry, but that doesn't make someone stronger, it just makes him scared. Even if you think it's good for him, or even if he said it was what he wanted. Like maybe when he was talking about having a fighting partner, what he really wanted was companionship due to being alone all the time. And to be totally candid, it's hard to believe you didn't know that. Which means it really is more than about what you want than what's best for him, even though you keep saying it's what's best for him, which makes it really hard to argue. Anyway, if you ask me, you're a rotten friend, and I don't think I want you to be one of mine after all. Uh, uh, I feel like that was directed at Dirk. <laughs> I don't want <laughs> Before Vrista can respond and almost inevitably make things worse, you cut her off. Enough is enough. You tell her you're sorry for making assumptions. You know that she was doing the best she could with the raw deal she was given in this culture. You offer her a quick thank you for this hellish social interaction and ask for some time alone with your incipient friend here. Vriska still looks annoyed and there's a moment where you're scared she won't let it go. But she does, stepping back and rearranging her facial expression to apathy. You guess pushing it would mean admitting she cares about your opinion of her? Whatever. Talk to you later, nerds! After she leaves, you put a comforting hand on Jake's shoulder. That got pretty raw, huh? It kinda seemed like in the end there, he wasn't talking about Vriska at all. Like, there was someone else he wanted to say all that stuff to. Huh? No, this has nothing to do with me. It was about some weird alien situation. Hmm. He gently suggests that this might be one of those situations the two of you were talking about earlier, where Jake is suppressing the truth because it's inconvenient to acknowledge. Doesn't it bear some slight resemblance to a situation in his own friend group? Hmm. <laughs> Jake averts his gaze, clearly uncomfortable. No way, all my friends are best in show. And even if what you're implying was true, it's different when it's your friends. A man can't get by without his bros, so sometimes he has to make allowances. What are these dogs? Oh my god, these dogs barking, bro. You hear that? Certain, let's say, eccentricities are just what you have to put up with when your best friends are involved. No, they're not. You're allowed to hold your friends accountable. Bro, chill, mailman. This is weapons-grade interpersonal truth you're spouting, but Jake doesn't look enlightened. Instead, he's growing red in the face with indignance. What would you know about it anyway? Not to be rude, but it's a very personal situation between a fella and his buddies. I don't think I appreciate what you're implying. 
You don't want to get frustrated, but Jake did ask for your help. The two of you came here because you were going to face up to the hard truths about Jake's life. Doesn't Jake want to do that? Well, of course I do. I'm ready to take a hard look at an old rum peeper and eat. No, no, doubt you. Don't you doubt it? Oh my god. It's just that when it comes to my friends, I didn't think you were saying any of them were bad. I thought you were encouraging me to take things in a more fortright direction because, well, uh, tugs at collar <laughs> nervously because of their feelings towards me. Gosh, it sounds stupid when I say it like that. I hope you know I'm not some kind of pompous braggadocio making myself out to be some slick Casanova type. I'm probably just making it up. I'm the kind of guy who gets confused easily, especially with the number of concussions I've sustained over the years. <laughs> A real beef with it bozo, that's me. But more than once I've gotten an inkling that some of my friends might be giving me the old eagle eye, firing up the courting maneuvers if you get my drift. <laughs> oh my god. So when you said things were right between me and my friends, that's sort of where I thought the personal change train was heading. An impression only further bolstered when you proceed to introduce me to your blue arachnid-themed friend, I figured you remembered my sapphire sirens from my room. You know, Nay Terry and all that. It was a sweet gesture, although, just so you're aware, she's a little too young for me to take that kind of interest. What? <laughs> I appreciate the thought, though just some constructive criticism for the next time. Now you're tempted yourself to say aloud some kind of goofy roleplay action indicating your embarrassment. You don't, though, because it sounds stupid when Jake does that. Jeez, this is a mess. This kid has issues on issues on issues on issues. <laughs> and when you think you put your finger on one, it slides away to reveal three more. You're playing personal growth whack-a-mole over here, but you gamely draw yourself up and plunge onward determined. Okay, you tell Jake. So if that's what he thought you were going to talk about, let's talk about it. How does it make him feel thinking his friends are all attracted to him? What does he plan to do about it? You, all of them or just two? Oh, you know, I think all that malarkey will work itself out over time. I figure I'll wait until someone brings it up and then just go along with what they think we should do. Really? That's a strategy? It seems remarkably lackadaisical, okay. and it gives you that sinking feeling again about what's in store for future Jake. Does he actually return any of those feelings? You're going in too deep, mailman! Sure I do, my friends are the cat's pajamas. I don't mind saying I really love them. Right, of course, but is there any one of them he feels differently about? What would he say if... For example, Jane asked him out. Ah. I'd say yes, of course. How could I say no to a top Sheba like Janie? She's smart as a wit with a mug to match. Alright, and what about Roxy? A fella would have to be <laughs> daft as a doorknob to turn down Roxy. She's a genius tech hacker spy like in all my favorite movies. And Strider? Are you kidding? Strider's is my best bro in the world and a mighty strapping gen if we're getting into it. I can't think of any reason to say no to a proposition like that from my best bud. The way Jake conceives of things is just far enough off from your own viewpoint. You can't help feeling like you're passing by each other without really connecting. For example, he doesn't have to have a reason to say no to a friend asking him out. It comes down to his feelings. Does he really have strong feelings for any of these people? Like, stronger feelings than he has for Nay Tiri? Whoa, hey, now that's not really fair. Nay Tiri is the perfect woman. No, you insist, it is fair. If someone has feelings for him, he should not be with them. What? If someone has feelings for him, he should not be with them unless he has stronger feelings for that real flesh and blood person than he does for a poster of Nay Tiri. It's important. Well, huh, if you put it that way, I don't know if I've ever had feelings like that. I don't even know if I'm capable of those kind of feelings. If that's the case, then he needs to be prepared to tell his friends that. It's not like he has to have these conversations now, but someday, the feelings his friends have need to be addressed, and he needs to be ready to turn them down. 
All three of them. <laughs> Even Roxy. He needs to make these decisions. He can't just wait for things to resolve on their own and deal with the consequences later. Huh? Wow. He doesn't sound nearly as excited about personal growth as he did before. He just sounds dejected. I must say, you're giving me a lot to think about. That's a good thing, remind him. He's learning important things. Well, sorry, but a lot of people tell me it's important for me to learn various things. And for some times, they're right. I've never assumed the image of a chap who knows everything. Well, you've also been telling me I can stand up for myself sometimes, make my own decisions about what's right instead of letting other people tell me how to live. And I just don't think I agree with you on this. He sneaks a guilty look at you from under his sad, bowed head. What I mean is, I like making my pals happy, even if I'm not always sure about if I want the things they want, and I can't imagine the consequences could be really be that bad. I think that in matters of the heart, I'm fine just going with the flow. No offense, but the way you're advocating I go about it seems hard and sad. I don't want to hurt people. I really think it's best if I just sit back and see how things work out. And if someone asks me to do something, I might as well try it. That's just the kind of adventure boy I am. You want to respect Jake's choices, but you can't help the the exas exasperation rising up in you. Sure, he can decide how he wants to conduct his friendships, but the approach he's talking about is really unhealthy. If he wants to do right by his friends, he has to be honest with them and with himself. Otherwise, it's not fair to anyone. <laughs> Why is the mailman getting so mad at Jake for Jesus Christ? Oh, I see what you're saying, but if you want my 100% bona fide opinion, I don't think I can do that. I guess we had different ideas about what we were getting into with this. He can do it though, all he has to do is try. Jake is shaking his head. I'm sorry, I know you were really trying to help. I'm sure you're an excellent compadre just like Spider Girl said, but this isn't working for me. Maybe you should just take me home now. I can figure out someone to deal with the robot. He's still well below the average Jake level of energy. You can see that you really affected him, but you're far from confident that your intervention is going to make any difference in the long run. This seems like a very long, wrong choice. <laughs> Despite his seeming earnestness, okay, you guessed Jake wasn't as ready for change as he thought he was. Wait a second, is this... Is this a bad- that's what I just said! A horrible powerlessness threatens to overwhelm you. All at once, it makes you furious. This isn't fair. Jake gave you a choice between two options. You chose to help him face his problems. You know that was the right choice. You didn't do anything wrong. You were kind and patient. You talked to him sincerely and pushed him in the right direction. You deserve a good end. You deserve to save him. But you can tell Jake is emotionally closing up. You're willing to bet the conversation the two of you just had was among the most candid of his life, and he isn't ready for another. You want so badly to help him. You know exactly the changes he needs to make, but you can't make those changes for him. He needs to do it himself. And he's just not ready. Maybe he'll never be. You hate this. You hate Jake, and you hate yourself. Making people's lives better is the one thing that's given you high piecemeal existence any meaning. And he's taking this away from you. His stupid inability to face his issues is ruining your life. Oh my god. You linger as long as you can, but eventually you have to do it. You gotta take the L. What? That was a bad end? It took so long! <laughs> what? Bro, are you kidding me? Bro, that cannot be right. I- that was so- that- what? That was the longest bad end I've ever seen in this whole game. I can't believe it, bro. I need to take a break. <laughs> what if this isn't even the right choice? <laughs> I mean, bro, come on. This is no good. That whole freaking agree to help option was like, oh, Dirk Jake is ruined. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they already broke up in canon. I mean, they're not together, but, like, this just proves, like, a lot of things that I can't even process, bro. It's crazy. Wow.
And now I'm just confused. <laughs> I don't know, Jake. I I don't I don't even want to help. I'm done, bro. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, fine. We're not gonna help you, Jake. I don't know how this is a better option, but we're not gonna help you. You are about to say yes. Every part of you is straining to say yes and fulfill your life's purpose. Your real life's purpose. Not like before when you were being mind-controlled to pursue friendship on whatever shallow or unsatisfying level was possible. What? This desire to help, to make your mark in whatever small positive way you can wrangle, is something you figured out for yourself. It matters. But when you're about to open your mouth, you stall. A deep existential hopelessness washes over you. A kind that you thought you were past by now. What? You know what? Screw it. Yes, you care, but honestly, you are exhausted. It's so much work coaxing teens through personal revelations with no reward except the temporary abatement of your deep soul level feeling of narrative irrelevance. You need a break. Why not give yourself a freebie? You tell Jake that you don't think he needs your help. <laughs> it's enough for right now that he's realized there's a problem. There's no need to swallow down all your personal growth pills at once, I guess. Jake looks objectively relieved. If I can shoot straight from the hip, that's exactly what I was hoping you'd say. Oh, I think I've done enough already, too. Whew, this has been a great talk. I feel like we're really firing in all cylinders, friendship-wise. If you were a past version of yourself, that would make you really happy. Instead, a sick feeling of guilt is poisoning your guts. You were about to touch on something real there, and you know it was wrong to pull back from it. You're not doing Jake any- What do you want from me? <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? Bro, come on. Still, you give him a weak smile and offer him the best friend-making tool you know. Are there any faraway friends he's interested in connecting with? Please say, Dirk. Boy, howdy, what a proposition. Well, I feel like one of those movie characters who's often near unlimited powers out of nowhere. Like Bruce Almighty, ready to lasso the moon and down the consequences of those pesky tides. There is someone I've had a hankering to meet with for a little teat of teat. I remember when I regaled you with the tale of my grandma. Oh, that will be nice. Oof. <laughs> you're not sure you're gonna be able to reunite this kid with his dead. What do you mean you can time travel, man? That seems like one of those things you won't be allowed to do, despite the supposed limitness, limitlessness of your power. What are you talking? I'm done, bro. I'm about to freaking... <laughs> I'm triggered. You'd probably be blocked by that weird force, the one that seems to have a power that supersedes zapping anywhere in any time, place, or dimension. You don't like to think about that force too hard. No, no, my Star Wars chum. I've been corresponding in an ekpi stollery fashion with a version of my grandma when she was a young girl, my pen pal buddy Jade. Oh, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> I understand if it's asking too much, but I love the meter. You rather meet her than your other friends? That is okay, whatever. She always said we made someday in some roundabout confusing who's he, what's it game, <laughs> and I was pleased as a passable possum to hear it. Well, recently she stopped replying, right in the final run up to the vaunted finish line. I've been all outwitted with worry, and I don't mind telling you. Do you think we could take a hop, skip, and a jump over to her lodgings? What a relief. You actually know Jade. You can take him to Jade right now. That's what he meant in the first place. Jake smiles a big goofy grin at you. You should feel happy. You tell yourself sternly this is a good thing to do. He said himself that you're fixing a concern of his. But the yawning malice inside of you grows. You like to think of yourself as an agent of positive change. But here you are again, nothing but a glorified interdimensional taxi service. Yes, I I know, man. It's like they don't even like want to be your friend. They're like, can you take me to meet my other friends? Bye bye. <laughs> like, bro, whatever. Who cares? At least he'll be with someone he loves. You grab Jake's hand and take him to his family. 
you ex- how did you know she was his family? <laughs> you expect the normal non-event of your zappy powers. But instead, there's a sick, wrenching feeling, a kind of squeezing, like you're not the right shape for whatever, wherever you're going. What? It steals your breath, and then it's gone. Nervously, you open your eyes. What the Jesus is this? Is that Club Penguin? <laughs> what the frick? I do not want to install updates, Apple. Get away with does this have to do with how your powers are changing? Sure, you were distracted and gloomy when you zapped, but you have no idea what just happened. Yo, where we at though, Loki? I don't, I don't know. What the freak? You're not at Jade's house. Wherever you are, it feels deeply wrong. <laughs> the wrongness jangles through your bones and teeth like the vibrations of a jackhammer. You're not supposed to be here. You have to get out of here. You grab Jake with a grimace and zap more carefully. Oh my god, don't shoot us. <laughs> oh, there we go. You read the sigh of relief, which is sadly cut short as you turn and see Jade shoving the muzzle of a rifle in your face once again. You back up, hands raised. Jade, no, it's you and her friend. <laughs> You've already been through all these wacky misunderstanding shenanigans with firearms. I know who it is. I just think you shouldn't be here. What? Don't get me wrong, I appreciate everything you've done for me. You have no idea what it meant to be able to meet my friends in person. But the last time you came here, things got dangerous. And I started to wonder if you have any idea what the consequences are what you're doing. What? <laughs> okay, there's obviously something she needs to get off her chest. And you want to hear it, but can she put the gun down? You both know she's not actually going to shoot you. Oh, well, I wouldn't be so sure. I mean, she's killed a lot of people, man. Oh, right. I guess the gun was a little over the top, but you startled me and I got really mad. Ever since you left last time, I've been thinking about what you did with me and Dave. What, what did I do? <laughs> Even though Beg didn't stop you, I don't think he wanted me to be traveling around like that. What? <laughs> I know you're a nice person and you don't mean to do anything bad, but I think it's impossible to have powers like yours without being a little corrupted by them. When you mess around in our lives, that can have serious consequences, but you always leave afterward and you don't live out those consequences with us. It was great to meet my friends, but you know what? I would have met them anyway in the game. Bro, forget the game, Jade, okay? The game is not happening in this timeline, okay? We're in a doomed timeline. Forget the game. <laughs> I can't help thinking it would have been better for things to play out like they were supposed to. So I'm sorry, but I just don't want you interfering in my life anymore. What? We're not friends anymore? Well, I don't even care, bro. It's fine. <laughs> I think it's for the good of everyone if you leave us alone from now on. Oh, wow. Wow, you're not even gonna say hi to your grandson? <laughs> wow, is he even here? I don't even... I mean, we left him. <laughs> it hurts to hear, but how could you argue with that? You tell Jay that you don't want to do anything that makes her uncomfortable. There's just, like, one little thing that you maybe already did. There he is. Y'all look so similar. It's so cute. <laughs> you gesture to Jake. He's huddled behind you, clearly having second thoughts about this. Maybe it's the gun. But then again, Jake is pretty comfortable around guns. Probably it's just fear of the mortifying ordeal of being known. Who the hell are you? Uh. You watch as he clears his throat and fidgets. His hands twitching at his sides like he's thinking about hanging on to his own guns for comfort. Oh, I'm your grandson? Jake? That's me. Jake burst into tears. Oh, now you care. She flings herself forward and throws her arms around Jake. Oh, I know I just said I didn't want any fearance, but this isn't fair. I can't believe you're here. Wow. When they pull apart, oh wow, he's actually crying. And Jake's eyes are watery as well. He's taller than Jade, being a few years older, but from the shy way, how many, what? 
I thought they were like all the same age, Loki. But from the shy way he looks at her, you can tell he still sees her as the authority figure here. You can suddenly see how much Jake must have admired his grandmother. Fine, you're still in a mood, but this is heartwarming as hell. You intentionally tune out the conversation a little as Jane and Jake gush at each other. It just seems really private. They're family after all. You don't have any place in this conversation, which only adds to your frustrated feeling of being help blocked. You mean a taxi service. <laughs> it's great that this is making Jane and Jake so happy, but it really has nothing to do with you at all. I guess I can't really give you the tour since you grew up in the same place as me, but maybe we can take advantage of this opportunity. We both grew up alone, right? Isn't there anything you always wanted to do but you couldn't do it with only one person? Holy hell, Jade, that's a rip snorter of an idea. You've got a splendid famous mind up in that noggin of yours. Aww, <laughs> it's weirding me out how much you sound like my grandpa. It's making me miss him too, but I'm really happy I get to spend time with you. Yeah, some weird stuff, man. Me too. As for your question, there's one thing that comes forefront in the old think tank. You know, how it is being a kid alone in your room on a godforsaken island in the middle of bum frick nowhere. You start to entertain all kinds of fantasies. Of course. Well, there's this cosplay I've been trying to make work for years. I'm not very good at cosplay and I haven't had anyone to help me bring my vision to life. Is that the kind of activity you'd be suited for? OMG, I would love that! What's the character? Only the best, bravest archaeologist slash adventurer of all time. I thought I was going to say Indiana Jones. <laughs> Laura Croft. Oh wow, so you want to be a sexy Tomb Raider? I think I'll have to stop picturing you as my grandpa, but I would love the help with that. To be frank, Jade, I don't really think of Miss Croft as sexy. Oh, I know some unmannerly roaches like the common on the size of her bazoombas, <laughs> but from where I'm sitting, she is a consumed professional. I just admire her moxie. Oh, oops, sorry. I was just making an assumption based on her outfit, I guess. That was really rude of me. To tell you the truth, I have never seen anything sexy about shorts. Okay. <laughs> I aspire to the freedom Lara's thighs get to experience every day. I think it's a beautiful dream. A man can wear short shorts without wanting everyone to get all raddied up about it, you know what I mean? Of course he can. But well, what about you, my juvenile grandma friend? <laughs> this can't just be a cosplay party for yours truly alone. Isn't there anyone you've been wanting to inhabit the garments of? Hmm, not really, but it would be fun to make a costume for me, too. I could be Mr. Coxcomb. What? He's one of my favorite Marathrow chaps. Jay turns to you, her demeanor towards you considerably softened. Hey, I'm sorry I was so mad earlier. Honestly, I was scared of what you were doing. It really shocked me to find myself on an alien planet. It felt like we shouldn't be doing it. What is she talking about? <laughs> but I shouldn't have taken it out on you. I know your powers aren't your fault. Do you want to join us? We can make a costume for you too. Oh yes, please do. Jay, this specimen right here has been nothing but a absolutely fantabulous friend of me all along. Have you? Have you? All you did was tell him along on your little inner timeline, John. You don't feel like you've done Jake much good. Are you even really friends with Jake? Are you just piggybacking off of facilitating his friendship with Jade? It's fine, you guess. Things are going fine. Even well. <laughs> but it feels unsatisfying. No real nutritional value. You don't feel good about what you've done, but you guess you might as well get a cool costume out of it. You tell Jake and Jade you know exactly who you want to dress like. A mailman! <laughs> the three of you set the work together. I better be dressed. Come on, bro. Oh my goodness. Why is Jake wearing... <laughs> Lord. Oh, that was the end of that long story. That was so long. Jesus Christ. I did get triggered, but I guess it worked out somewhat.
I think me and the mailman and me are like on the same page because we're like, what the Jesus? This is not right, man. But I guess it's whatever. So peace out, friends.